Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Bloom the Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode, episode 37. We are so happy that you guys are back. And if you're new here, I am your host, Donovan. This is my co-host, Ashley. What's up? Yeah, and we are back. We are the dynamic duo of the podcasting world. <laughs> and we are here with the Realist Christian Talk Show. That's on the internet, guys. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys subscribe for weekly uploads. But um, we're super, super happy for uh, today's episode. Um, if you guys didn't check out last week's episode, make sure you guys go do that. That was a fun one. Um, that was our first episode of 2021, right? Uh, I think. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's the one we did. Actually, it might have been our <laughs> second. No, I think it was our first. All right. Whatever. Bye. Y'all see it. It's whatever. It's good. <laughs> um but yeah so starting off we have our new segment we have the bloom moment of the week Mm -hmm. and if i hope you guys are all enjoying this segment i know i am kind of keeping track of our growth and seeing what the lord is doing in our lives so do you want to go first or should i for the bloom moment of the week Um, i can go first go for it um this week i feel like god has been teaching me patience and being content because the way you said that. Patience. <laughs> patience. <laughs> yeah um some health stuff came up or whatever and my entire diet has been flipped around and like i haven't been able to like eat how i normally do and there's right. been a lot of days where i'm just hungry and there's really nothing to eat you know yeah. because i'm just like adjusting yeah and my body was like killing me because it needs food so it's just been like a time of like trusting like not being angry or upset with why god let that happen you know Mm -hmm. but accepting it and taking it as a trial that i can grow stronger through and just being content in what i can have not focusing on just like what's been taken away but like what i still have you know Right. So I feel like that has been my week <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, that's super important. And viewing everything with kind of through that lens of like whatever the Lord gives or whatever the Lord takes away, like mm-hmm. I'm OK with it. And that's right. a hard place to be at. So I definitely uh, understand where you're coming from there. Mm-hmm. Um, For me, I would say I think the Lord has been showing me about it well in my in my own heart uh a need to grow in love for people and for i guess just love in general um i recently heard a message um about how we should be known as christians and it was all about being known for our love Mm -hmm. not only to people in our friend groups and our families and the church but to literally everybody around us to Mm -hmm. where we're looked at and the people around us that have no idea about the Bible or about God, or about anything can look at us and say that person has a genuine love for people mm-hmm. and he genuinely wants people, you know, wants what's best for people and wants and cares for their souls. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I think about my life, I don't know if that's exactly how I'm going to be remembered. <laughs> so <laughs> I definitely want to work on that and try and grow my love for for people and for the Lord. And honestly, that that's what the Bible says. They'll, they'll know you for your love. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if we claim to be believers and we, you know, profess faith, then that's something that we're commanded to do is to love people. Right. So there you guys have it. Blue moment of the week. If you guys have anything that you guys want to share uh, from this week that the Lord has put on your heart or really just anything in general that you feel like you've been growing in or that you'd like to share with us, feel free to drop it in the comments or to message either of us directly um we would love to connect with you guys and see how you guys are doing and how you guys are growing and how we could potentially be praying for you um so definitely make sure you guys do that um but getting into today's episode we have a fun one and we are actually collaborating with someone that i was talking to in the christian content sphere um so super happy that they we were able to connect and uh we'll leave their links in the bio but this is e4j circle that's everything for jesus circle and we were talking about um, collaborating on a project. So we'll leave uh, the links to their project in the bio as well. So you can check out them as well. 
Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, staying motivated to read the word. And E4J Circle gave us a couple of talking points to go over, to give our opinions, our experiences, and kind of have that conversation about staying motivated to be in the Word. I know a lot of Christians, including myself, um, want to be more consistent with Bible reading in 2020. And that all comes from the 2021. Motiv- or, yeah, 2021. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Stuck in the past. <laughs> what can I say? You know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we just wanted to be more consistent in 2021 about reading the Bible daily and setting goals and really growing in that area. Mm -hmm. Um, So we appreciate E4J Circle for reaching out and giving us these talking points to go over in the podcast. I think it's going to be a really great episode. So if you guys are excited for this, uh, make sure you guys drop a like and we'll jump straight into it. Um, The first thing that uh, we were kind of going over and that she brought to our attention um, was prayer. Mm -hmm. and how we should be, you know, asking the Lord to help provide that motivation. And that's super important. So I'll pass it off to you first. How have you seen or, you know, I guess I should say in your prayer life, is that something that you find yourself uh, going to or asking the Lord for? And if so, how have you seen it play in your a role in your Bible reading? And if not, what role do you think it would play? Hmm. I think I have, I've obviously done that, but like, obviously I don't do it all the time, but I think that's like a known thing that people like tell you to pray before you read because you're praying to help get the most out of it as you can, Right. Um, which sometimes I forget and then I'll like pray afterwards and I'm like, well, that could have been nice to pray beforehand, (laughs) but you know, like it takes two seconds to pray before you read and like so often when you like miss that step so it's kind Mm -hmm. of like it is something that i think we should all do Mm -hmm. um and what was what was your last question um i was saying like uh how do you think it would play a role you know if you know if we were to start doing that daily i think it'd play like a huge role you know like god wants us to understand what he's saying like what people are saying in the bible and like you know like this is like how how we get close to him, you know, so there's no way like he doesn't want us to understand. So why wouldn't we ask, you know, for struggling? And I think right. it'd play like a humongous role, obviously, because he does want us to understand. So yeah. I agree. And I think another thing, too, is a lot of times I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know when I am going through something or whether it be a trial or I'm wanting to make a decision or I'm looking for clarity on something and I go to the Bible, oftentimes the Lord has a way of directing me to the exact passage. <laughs> the wind blows the pages. <laughs> right. I just op- like flip the pages open. And I'm like, oh, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Mm-hmm. And then that just happens to be the verse that provides that clarity or kind of pushes me in the direction that I need to go. Yeah. And I think if we were to start praying for that kind of guidance every day, you know, I think we would be able to find it so much easier for the Lord to show us we're looking for it you know a lot of times Mm -hmm. I feel like we just open our Bibles and we're there but you know we're not asking the Lord to guide us in that time yeah like oh I want to know as much as possible like show me everything I could see yeah and that's something I've been doing recently as I've been asking him to show me something that's going to cultivate my love for you in a new way maybe something I haven't seen before or maybe a nuance that I didn't quite grasp in a verse I've read maybe a hundred times mm-hmm. and just like show me something that refreshes j- that motivation to want to obey and to want to desire God you mm. know because I think a lot of times we get uh like it says in Revelation we lose our first love yeah and you know that can contribute to a huge reason why we don't stay motivated in reading the bible right 100 yeah. percent. so uh moving on um one of the other talking points that we went over with e4j was time of day um and kind of figuring out how to put that into a schedule mm-hmm. i think it can be kind of daunting sometimes to set yourself to a strict time Mm -hmm. slot to read the bible and then you feel like if you are running late that day or if you're you know behind on something or whatever it it can be kind of like psychologically debilitating to get into the word so what would you say you've experienced with that so okay honestly you know me i'm all for scheduling and planning out when you're gonna do this this and that 
But as I've noticed for myself, and I've talked a lot about how it's just marking off the tasks and stuff, yeah. I've realized that putting Bible time at a specific time in the day is almost a bad idea for me because yeah. it's just like, okay, at this time I'm going to do this and I know I have other stuff I want to do and I know I'm going to be thinking about that stuff or I know right. I have laundry or I need to do that and I'm going to be thinking about it so I'll rush through. But you know what? I'm doing it when I said I would in the morning. You know, like yeah. that's kind of like what it is. And I would rather be like, oh, you know, like I know at some point today I'm going to have a free chunk of time because I end up knocking stuff out, you know, earlier. And mm. after I'm done stressing about it, I get it yeah. all done. Yeah. And then you're just sitting there. You're like, hmm, maybe I'll watch TV or something, you know, like I know there's going to be a time in the day where it's like that. And so for me. I've almost learned to just be like, you know what? At that time of the day, then I can read my Bible because I will have nothing mm. distracting me or me being like, oh, like I have so much to do, you know, like just need mm. to get this over with. Like it's literally that's going to be the only thing in front of me. And so I can spend my time doing that. So that's kind of been my experience with it. That might be weird because I know most people like maybe have a more strict schedule where they work all day and so doing yeah. battle time in the morning is like good but like mm -hmm. for someone with my type of schedule at least i find it easier to not work with a schedule <laughs> for bible time yeah <laughs> but. interesting yeah that's i don't know if i would say it's like uncommon i think it's probably not uh if like most people would like do it on a schedule but that is yeah. interesting do you find that you're yeah, like less distracted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because like I have nothing else to do. But even I, when I say <laughs> I mean like from just general everyday like because that's one thing I was going to say mm. is I've been doing it every day early in the morning. But one thing that keeps coming up is just like the things around me, whether it be my phone mm. going off or like something random or like I see something falling in the back and I'm like. Or I got to clean something or like just all the random stuff that just come to br my yeah. brain. Sometimes it's so hard to focus. Well, I, I definitely have that. But my thing is, is when there is nothing else to do and you just get distracted by little things, you have so much time to put yourself in check. You know, like you might yeah. get distracted on your phone for a couple minutes and you're like, oh, like I should get back to Bible time, you know. But mm -hmm. you're, there's nothing like waiting on you where you're like, dang it, I spent time on my phone. Now I don't have time for Bible time because I have to move on to something else. You know, now yeah. it's like. No, I just need to get back to Bible time and that's just what I need to do because there's nothing else. Like these are all distractions, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of how I've dealt with the distraction aspect of it. Right. Right. Yeah. I would say for me, because I do work um, majority of the day, mm -hmm. um, I've been getting up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> I've been doing it really early in the morning. Can you I even focus that early in the morning? Well, for me, I, I work out first thing in the morning. And then mm. that kind of stimulates my brain to be up. That must so, be nice. It makes me tired. <laughs> yeah. So, well, after I work out and I take a shower, I'm usually able to be pretty okay for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So once I can, you know, work out, clean myself and shower, and then I can sit down and read. Um, the quiet is very important. So early in the morning is usually <laughs> best for me because mm. um, I'm like, like a dog at a park, you know, <laughs> like the wind blows one little leaf and I'm like... <laughs> like what was that um yeah. so that's one thing so i would say depending on the, everything it's really dependent on the person yeah and their schedule i mean if you work yeah. a nine to five and you don't really have a choice but to do your bible dive in the morning then that's what you need to do yeah but i think there is also um an importance at least i know for myself because i know how i work of scheduling it in Mm -hmm. because i'm the type of person who if i tell myself like oh i'll have some free time later even though i will have free time later and <laughs> i know that i will i yeah. will give myself some kind of um escape of being like ah oh, man well i'm I'm doing this right now or i'm gonna have to cook something or mm -hmm. there's a i'm gonna have to call my parents or you know whatever it may be something's gonna end up jumping in that spot if i don't actively work on like okay it's 7 a.m right now i am reading my bible till 7 30 mm -hmm. you know so there is that uh kind of power in scheduling where yeah and I think even yeah. like if you want to do my method, technically, just schedule it for after you finish everything. And it's still yeah. part of the schedule, you know, like yeah. um, and I think just I don't know. Yeah, I think you can just still schedule that thing specific thing in without, you know, 
everything else so yeah and i would say one thing too about scheduling because i know a lot of people like they get tied down by it i would say and this is one thing i've learned about scheduling in general i was i was listening to a podcast and this one thing hit me like pretty hard when i heard because i've never thought about it this way he was talking about scheduling and how to be productive in a day and he was saying people don't use calendars because they let the calendar be a tyrant over them Mm. they don't schedule things the way that they're supposed to they schedule everything in a way that makes their day bad it's like and the way the analogy he kind of broke down is if you were going to schedule a day to be as good as it could be what would you schedule your day to look like and that's talking about scheduling in things that you want to do versus and things that you have to do. And I think Bible time is both on that. Mm. You, we should want to do it and it's something we have to do. So I think scheduling, we should be looking at our calendars and when we're scheduling the Bible time and like, when am I going to be able to do this thing that I want to do and need to do, which is Bible reading and have the most time to actually enjoy it. Mm. So not letting the calendar become this kind of like ruler over your day. Like, oh man, it's seven o'clock. Gotta read now. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's seven o'clock. I scheduled this 701, time. 7.01, I missed it. Right. It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's seven <laughs> o'clock and now I know I put this time in my calendar because I want to be doing this thing. Mm. So scheduling your day in a way that makes you want to do the things that you put on your on your calendar you know right and i think for people who really like schedules yeah i tend to recommend a bible tracker because you know what it will it will hurt your soul when you see that you've missed a couple days you know and that puts your butt in check you know like if you don't have a specific schedule for when you do your bible time right that'll sure as heck put your butt in place when you're like oh shoot it's been a couple (laughs) you know because it yeah. is so unsatisfying to see those on like the way i do it is i color in the circle when i do it right yeah and it is so displeasing when you see circles that aren't colored in Let don't me lie tell you don't why. lie at the end of the month do you color all of them in just no, for satisfaction no, okay i haven't i i just look at it and i'm like <laughs> she's like a week later she's like <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the year maybe just just yeah. for the aesthetic <laughs> yeah she's like red every day <laughs> And that's funny because that actually brings us into the next point, which we were talking about and which E4J brought up. And that was um, doing a reading the Bible in a year. Mm. And that's one of those things, kind of like a Bible tracker, where if you kind of miss. Yeah, if you flake on yourself and and you aren't consistent, you're going to see big gaps. You're going to find yourself doing a lot of days where you need to schedule in more time to read because you missed and you need to catch up so you can actually hit the goal. So I think that's another good thing. I don't know if you have you ever done that. Yeah, me and Nikki are actually doing it right now. Really? Where yeah. are you guys at? We are reading Genesis and Matthew. So it's like, I'll read Matthew and he'll read Genesis. Oh, so you do it like once in the morning, once at night? No. So it's actually, there are two like pages that you read at night. Yeah. Oh, oh. So there's like two chapters in Matthew and one chapter in Genesis and you read it all together. Okay. So what is the projected end date? Like how long, if you do like two chapters of the New Testament, one chapter of the old every day. I think you're supposed to finish by the end of the year but i'm i'm not really mm. sure i it's in the john MacArthur study bible actually so it's okay. just like the recommended what to read to like do it so we do that at nighttime which is also another thing like having two bible times and this can be for single people too like it doesn't have to just be with your <laughs> spouse you know because i think for me it's like oh like nighttime bible time is something to do with my husband type thing you know but yeah. like single people can totally do that there's yeah, no guys. rule and it is really like <laughs> it's good <laughs> honestly because we're supposed to like think about people who read their bible like all day long you know we don't yeah. do that so it's good to like have it in the morning and at night so like you're starting your day with something good and ending your day with something good but yeah, yeah. we're doing that the the bible plan yeah and it's good yeah so that's awesome Mm -hmm. yeah i'm actually gonna have to get on it because i've been talking to a couple people now you're i think the third person i've talked to now well i guess you and nikki fourth um Mm -hmm. that are doing that and that's super cool because i've actually never done it um and i think the thing that always has deterred me from doing it is because one of the things that keeps me motivated to read is my interest in topical studies Mm. So a lot of times I'll find something that interests me or I'll find a book that I feel like is calling out to me because of a certain book theme or what have you. Yeah. And I kind of just go in on that. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I mean, that's obvious. It's not a bad thing. But yeah, I think good. as far as consistency and motivation sake, I think it, it has hindered me in the past because mm. especially like because before I was reading um, First Peter. Right. And once I finished First Peter, 
because it's only four chapters or something. <laughs> it's a small book. I mean, obviously, I was I was rereading it and like doing like kind of like word study and like diving into like the little nuances of the book. But still, like it's still a smaller book. And once you kind of get through it and maybe two, three, four weeks, then I'm like searching for another topic rather than kind of just like, oh, OK, I finished first Peter. Now I go to second Peter like mm-hmm. I would if I was doing um the bible in a year yeah it can be easy to get bogged down with the bible in the year when you get to like the part in the bible where it's just naming a bunch of names and you're like "Mm," you know like even though like but you you have to read them like it's in the bible for reasons so you just need to like go through it but like for someone like you that's actually how i am too and so i think even when you're doing a bible in a year it's i think it's a good thing to do those things while you're doing the bible in the year that way you're getting something topical in case you might be at a part in the bible where you're like okay like (laughs) not much to pull from here but i i want to stick with the schedule you know yeah like it's good to have multiple things you can pull from so you stay motivated to keep right right i mean and there's Mm -hmm. also nothing wrong with doing both Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know like if you are doing the Bible in a year, but then you have some extra time and you're interested in doing a word study or a book study or a topic study, like throw that in there. You're not going to overdo yourself on Bible reading. That's not possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and I think that's one of the other things going to the last point that we were going over with uh, E4J. Um, and that was remember why you're reading the Bible, mm-hmm. you know, keeping the motivation there as well is also super important because mm-hmm. I mean, it's the relationship with the Lord. It's our spiritual health. It's, you know, it's the food. It's the food. I was literally just thinking, I was trying to remember the ver- how the verse goes, like, man must not yeah, live on bread alone. Yeah, I couldn't alone. remember how the verse went, but I was like, I yeah. know it's the food. <laughs> it is the, it's the food for the soul. And, you know, once you get into a good habit, and this one, the one thing we talked about on the episode with uh, AJ, mm-hmm. is once you're reading it, and that's something actually you said, it's like, we're so much better when we read the word. We It just, our trajectory for the day, it just mm-hmm. launches into such a better place. And that's how we have conversation with God. And you want to be a better person in 2021. Read right. your Bible. <laughs> circling back to the first point that we went over with the prayer, that's the only way we can really have dialogue with God. Because if mm-hmm. we're praying for things, but we're not reading in the word. You're not getting any answers. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to find what you're looking for. Right. So I think it's so important to remember why we do what we do as believers and just how vital it is to be in the word and be growing and to be pursuing it and to be enjoying it while we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Super important. Definitely. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Um, thank you so much E4J Circle for uh, going over these talking points with us. We really enjoyed uh, talking about this. It's a great topic and something Christians should always be pushing other believers to do and really keeping each other accountable to be in the word. Uh, so again, for all the bloomers, I will be dropping the links for their Instagram uh, in our comments below. Make sure you guys go follow them and check out their IGTV that they're going to be putting out uh, on this topic as well. Um, but we are not done. As y'all know, we have Table Talk with the Bloomers to end our episodes. And um, we have some interesting questions. <laughs> I think mainly the one from you, the one that you got DM'd. But f- we'll start with uh, the one that I got, um, which was, where do you get bloom hoodies? And that's a great question, guys. Um, so you can message us directly if you guys want a bloom hoodie. We aren't putting them out like at volume. But we will send you guys one if you guys want one. So um, if you guys do want one, uh, reach out to us. We can get you info on pricing and, you know, we can send it to you. Or if you guys are close by, we're always happy to drop it off for you. Um, So definitely reach out to us if you guys are interested in getting a Bloom hoodie. We're going to be I know we always wear the white ones, but we're hoping to be making some black ones uh, super soon. If you guys have been on our Instagram or on our YouTube, you know, we we have an inverted logo um, that is black and still has all the same color themes same logo and everything but just uh, a black version mm-hmm. um so either one if you don't want black or white definitely reach out to us when we can uh or hook that we'll up make for some you. other colors too heck yeah we some can make a pur- light I thinking, pink i was thinking that or like a lavender purple one yeah i think that would be I, really I good dig that with like a white look that would be sick actually yeah Anywho, what was your question? I think yours so, is more interesting. <laughs> my question was, 
Ashley, did your parents rush you to get married or is that what you wanted? So I think I've actually, I feel like I've heard this so many times, but I feel like everyone has this misconception that our family like is just like pawning kids off. <laughs> like, go they get just want married. An empty house. Yeah, like we're trying to get rid of you <laughs> as quick as possible. And like that it's our duty as McReynolds kids to get married as fast as we can. Let me tell you something. No one planned this out. Like Except nobody. <laughs> yeah, I planned it out for myself, <laughs> but nobody planned it out for me. And no one like there was no like, oh, you should do this. Not even that. Like this is all of us kids have decided these things completely 100 percent on our own. And. I just want to make that clear because I'm so tired of people being like, it's like a McReynolds thing. I'm like, no, maybe just all of us kids happen to desire. But that. <laughs> I'll I'll jump on the back of that because mm -hmm. while our parents do not force us to or pressure us to do anything, mm -hmm. they do give wise counsel. Right. And none of us have the gift of singleness as far as we're aware. <laughs> so, you know, the way we've been brought up is to, you know, prioritize marriage if that's something that we want to mm -hmm. do which all of us have said that's what we want to do. And, you know, pursuing it means dating intentionally. And with dating intentionally comes no. young marriage. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's really yeah. just how we've been brought up to think about relationships and the importance of marriage. Mm -hmm. So while we aren't pressured, we do understand the weight that marriage carries and the weight that relationships carry. So I think you getting married at a young age, all the you know, Aaliyah, AJ getting yeah. married at a young age. It comes with the teaching of don't mess around. It's mm -hmm. your life. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not a game. So mm -hmm. I think that's more or less what people see when they look at from the outside looking in and they come off as, oh, get married as soon as possible. But no, it's yeah, it's like, oh, like if if you date a McGrounds, they're just going to try and marry you. Three thing. days it's later. Like, oh, cut it, please. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. It's just. Um, if it's if you if you both love each other and you know that you want a future, then we ain't playing games. <laughs> that's more that's or less what it what is. We ain't like. baby gamers. So yeah, to answer <laughs> your question. Sorry, I just hijacked your question, but I feel like that's no, more or less where it comes no, from. No, yeah, no, that's true. I think, I, yeah, I was answering more from a standpoint of just being annoyed at people having that misconception that yeah. we literally all are just like plotting back here. So that's yeah. how I answered. But those are facts. Yeah. So yeah, that is. I'm not even married, answer. and I'm in that same misconception. So <laughs> yeah, seriously, it is what it is. But like that. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for uh, throwing us questions, and we're always happy to answer them. So anything that you guys want to ask, literally anything, we'll answer it here. So mm -hmm. um, make sure you guys comment below any questions that you may have, and stay on the lookout for our post midweek. We'll be putting um, a poll out on our Instagram for you guys to drop down some questions, anything that you want. Um, and if you guys ever think of anything midweek, feel free to DM us. We're happy to talk to any of you guys listening, uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, we always love chatting with you guys. Um, and again, one last shout out to E4J Circle. Uh, make sure you guys follow them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for weekly uploads. And we will see you guys on the next episode.